Hey, thank you for watching this Rockin' and Roman video. Today we're going to show you how to use your RV oven and stove. Now I assume if you clicked on this video you probably just got an RV or motorhome and are trying to figure out how to use all the different things in it. So we're going to show you how to use the oven and the stove. We're going to show you how it's different from the ones you have in your home. And we're also going to show and tell you a little bit about how they actually cook differently. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more great RV how-to videos. We're going to make a whole playlist that's going to show you how to use all the things in your RV. And we already have a few videos out and we're going to try and release a new video at least once a week specifically on how to use things in your RV. Now let's get to it and show you how to use your new oven and stove so that you can be having great meals in no time. One of the first things you're going to notice for the oven and stove in the RV versus the one in your home is definitely going to be size. Because the RV is so much smaller than the home, all the appliances need to be smaller. In the oven right now, we have a 13 inch pizza pan. So it's definitely for a smaller pizza and you can see it just barely fits in the oven with only maybe two inches on either side to spare. What this means is that if you have large family sized casserole dishes and large pots and pans that you're used to cooking in in your oven at home, you might want to make sure that they can fit in the oven in the RV before you go on a trip. Most likely you can actually have to go buy some smaller ones. We have some very small casserole dishes and small pizza pans like this and we even actually use our 10 inch skillet sometimes to cook in the oven. Another difference that you're probably going to notice about your oven is that it only has one rack. Now most of our ovens at home usually have two racks, uh, maybe even three if you have a really big one, but this only has one rack. It also has a lower part that is almost like a protection for the propane uh, burner that heats the oven and also catches grease and stuff like that. One nice thing is the rack does have a few different channels you can move it on. And as you can see, it has these tongs on the back. So when it's sitting there and it's leaning forward, it's on pressure. So to take it out, you just lift up on the front and pull it out. We'll talk just a little bit about the parts of your new oven and stove, and then we'll move on and I'll show you how to light and use the oven and then how to light and use the stove on top. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but here are your main burners. This is your spark. So when you do that click, it is going to put a spark to the burners as well as to the oven. So whichever gas you turn on, you always use the same starter. Here are your three burner controls, and then this is your oven control. So this is going to have stickers like we have right here, or paint it on, which shows you which burner this will be controlling. And that's going to be for each of these. Then over here, this is going to be the burner control. So this is going to control the temperature of your oven and how much propane is burning in there. Also on a lot of them, there's a little button right here and that's going to be your light button. That controls the light inside as well as the lights around the control knobs. Also, up top here, right behind all the burners and the glass that covers the burners, there is a vent. That is the vent for your stove's heat. And trust me, don't put anything plastic near it. As you can see right here, we made that mistake and burnt our spoon holder, one of our first nights in the RV. So make sure to take a good look at that vent and try and always keep everything flammable away from it or anything that could melt because it lets out some really hot air. Now let's show you how to light the oven. So the first thing you want to do is open the oven. And what I like to do is you can actually look in the reflection of the glass of the oven door to see the spark at the back of the propane burner and see when you actually get the oven lit. And it's a lot better than craning your neck down here trying to look in there and figure out if you've lit it while trying to light it and work both the knobs. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your sparker knob, get that in one hand. You can go to your oven knob in the other hand, and in most RVs, you push it in, then turn it 
tell there's a little flame icon or something like that before any of the temperature uh, readouts. And once you're holding that, then you're gonna start sparking. And it looks like I got it first try. So then, oh, and it died out. So what you have to do is once you get it sparked, you let go and turn it all the way on to get all the propane coming out. Otherwise it'll die really quick. So we're gonna do it again. Push, turn, spark. I can see in there that I got lit. Then I'm gonna turn it all the way and it's gonna turn on. And once you do that, then what you need to do is close the door to let it preheat because for whatever reason, these things just don't get as hot as our ovens at home. I feel like it takes forever to cook in them, which is weird because it's a smaller space. So I would think it would heat faster, but maybe it's just the insulation or something. Once you get your oven lit, there is a knob that will give you temperature readouts and you can dial it into the desired temperature. We feel, however, that those temperatures are completely wrong by at least 50, if not 100 degrees. Usually, if something is supposed to be on 350, we'll actually set the knob to 400 or 450 and find that that seems to be closer to the desired temperature than the 350 spot on the knob. We also find that cooking time is a lot longer, especially for very dense and thick foods. A pizza that should take 20 minutes usually takes 30. A uh, potato that should take an hour usually takes almost two and some casseroles that should take an hour take an hour and a half to two. So definitely be aware that it will take longer in your oven. Also altitude of where you're camping can affect that. One of the things we suggest is that if it's going to be something that usually takes an hour, you might be better off to cook it on the campfire or on the stovetop which seems to cook just the same as a stovetop would at home. And that's what we do a lot of times for our casseroles now is we'll cook them in our cast iron or something like that. But if we have the time and we really just want that great baked taste, then we will use the oven, but I never really do it for a quick meal, only for something that we're okay with waiting for. Now let's move on to your stovetop. So there's a glass covering over the burners. We actually like to keep a cloth on top of that just to protect the glass from cats, uh, things that fall, just pretty much everything. So then most glass coverings are gonna be a bi or tri-fold, so it just folds over and then flips up and also acts like a backsplash to keep grease from getting on the walls and such. Most of them also come with a removable metal section that holds all your pots and pans. And on most of them, there is three burners. Sometimes if it's a really small RV, you might only have two, but most of them have three. And these work much as one in your home would. So to turn on the stove top, it's gonna be much like the one in your house. What you're gonna do is you're going to press in and start to turn until you hear the propane coming out. Then you're going to just click on the star like that and voila, you got some fire to cook on. To turn off, you do pretty much the same. You don't have to press in, all you do is turn. And it has that press in feature, so you can see I can't turn it right now until I press it in and then I turn it. Now the stovetop we found cooks just like one in your house, and like I've said earlier, I would actually cook your casseroles on a skillet on the stovetop. When you're all done with it, all you're gonna do is just close your bifold back up and it has little rubber bumpers right here, so just push them down and that will really kind of lock it in there for you. Thank you for watching this Rock and Roman video. I hope that we helped you gain knowledge and confidence regarding your oven and stovetop in the RV. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you want to learn more about your RV and how to use the things in it. Also, we're going to try and maybe even make some videos on recipes for cooking in the RV. Please let us know down in the comments if that's something that you would like to watch and if we should make a video about RV recipes. Yeah.